Welcome, everybody, into a, another day of River States Conference Baseball here at Cutter Sports Complex in New Albany, Indiana. I'm Kyle Hawkins, along with Steven Newts, for a RSC matchup, the doubleheader day for IU Southeast versus the visiting Bearcats of Brescia University. Steven, how are things going so far this morning? Grenadiers uh, looking to build off of a comeback win yesterday, a six-run sixth inning. Put them in front, and the good work by the bullpen locked down game one. We'll see what happens here. We'll, uh, game two and game three, nine-inning game coming up, and then the seven. So uh, Grenadiers looking for another sweep before they head on, on the road. Yeah, and like you said, a comeback win yesterday after a, a big sixth inning um, where the Grenadiers found themselves taking their first lead of the game with a sixth spot in the bottom half. Um, and then no other scoring rest of the way either side as the final score yesterday was 9-7. So, as we mentioned, IU Southeast took game one. So, look to win the series here in game one with, like you said, Stephen, an opportunity to sweep in game three. So, starting pitcher for IU Southeast here in the nine-inning game today is going to be senior Tyler Yakovic. And I'll set the Grenadier – defense for you. Left to right in the outfield is Colin Long, Mason White, and Luke Powell in right. And around the infield will be Slater Shield, Cody Putnam at short, Ethan Burdett at second, and Max Flock at first. That has been pretty much the standard lineup with the battery. Of course, Tyler Yakovic being caught by Logan Murphy. As Marco Miller steps in and sees a first pitch strike, and we're underway. Yakovic making his ninth start of the season. He's four and four. As that one's hit well, that's going to get down. And good job by Powell to snare that one. And the throw comes in very quickly. So Marco had a pretty hefty round there. But he will stick with just a single. But Bearcats starting off a little bit like they did yesterday and just being aggressive early and have themselves a base runner. Again, Miller was thinking too the whole way there. Nice job to cut that one off in right field and get that back in quickly by Powell and hold him to a single. And it'll bring up the second baseman, Gavin Hubner. He had himself a, a decent day yesterday. Yakovich has worked 37 innings, has a ERA of 5.35. And it looks like Hubner may square, and he pulls back. And that's going to catch a piece. So first two batters reach safely here for Brescia. That makes way for the starting pitcher and designated hitter for Brescia here in the first game of the day, Johnny Fody. Who had a nice day yesterday and now pulls double duty as the DH and the pitcher. Yakovic able to get ahead to his counterpart. Not often do you get to say that one, Steven. Yeah, that's uh, a little a unique situation here in game one. But that the, that uh, one went. <laughs> that ricocheted off the fence into left field. Bearcats want to keep Fody's bat in the lineup, so he'll be the DH and the pitcher. Which does allow you to change pitchers but leave him in offensively. As the designated hitter, yep. The 0-2 from Yakovic. Breaking ball off the end of the bat, but that's going to get through. So coming up and a good throw there by Long gets it in. So that's going to be... Another base hit for Brescia. So bases are loaded, nobody out. We'll see how the Grenadiers fare here as we're going to have a brief conversation on the mound. Yeah, three straight hits. Now the sack, sacks are packed for the Bearcats, and Yakovich is going to have to find a way to work his way out of this jam here early. Yeah, not a situation you'd love to be in, especially, I mean, you haven't even recorded an out yet. And like you said, sacks are packed. So it is going to be a tough situation for the senior right-hander to get out of. But sinker heavy. 
type of pitcher is Yakovich, so you'd love to take. You, I mean, you'll trade, especially this early in a, in a game, you'll trade a run for two outs if he's able to do so. But he's going to have to get on the offensive here quickly. Looks like so far he's just leaving everything up in the zone, and the Bearcats are. Yeah, and they're, I mean, they're just being aggressive. Yep. They're and we saw this yesterday against Schaefer as well. Mikey Clements, left fielder for Brescia, will step in as he's going to look to try to get the Bearcats on the board first. Good pitch there from Yakovich. Grenadiers in their white V-neck with the white pants and the black hat today. It's the first time I think I've ever seen them go with this unit. Uniform combo. I don't hate it. I don't know if it's my favorite. It's uh, it, but it yeah. doesn't look bad. No, it doesn't look bad. I'm just, and I'm not used to it. That I think is the bigger thing. An unnecessary check as they try to see if he went, and I mean, his hands barely started, and I could tell that one from here. So the count will move to one and two to Clements as Yakovich would love a strikeout. The pitch. That one's going to miss outside. The 2-2. Two -two. That one hit hard, and that's going to get down, and that's going to be runs. Yakovich unable to get out of this one cleanly, and that's going to be misplayed a little bit and allow Clements to move up to second. So Clements knocks in a couple of runs here, and the hits just keep on coming for the Bearcats. So far, nice piece of hitting just down in the left field corner there. Long had a little bit of trouble with it. And and with a with a shortened, more thin pitching staff this weekend than normal, you'd love to see Yak be able to go deep into this game, but not off to the best start here. They check the runner at third there, but he's back standing up. Not quite sure if that was a ball or a strike. I think that was a ball. Interesting. So 1-0 count to the catcher, Gamble. And he's going to hit that up the middle, and that's going to get past Putnam. Two more runs. So disastrous start for the Grenadiers here as Brush has already played it four before they record an out. Another shot this time up the middle, and Putnam can't get his glove down. And we'll have a courtesy runner at first for the catcher. I believe it was, I believe it's 24, but. And now Quartz will be the batter. Good bounce back there from Yakovic as he gets ahead 0-2. Double play would be nice, but at this point, Yakovic just needs an out. Just try to limit the damage. Got him. They're going to say got him on the foot. Yep. So a good throw there by Murphy. And, I mean, the Grenadiers needed that one. And that was one where I thought that throw was not going to have a chance. And a nice tag there right on the foot before he'd get his hand in. And then followed up with a punch out. So good bounce back there from Yakovich. Followed up, obviously, with that throw by Murphy. So two outs now. And base is clear for the third baseman, Gavin Reams. 
We saw this yesterday, Brescia jumping out to a big lead and couldn't hold it. See what happens here, they've got to know you got to continue to put innings together because of this Grenadier offensive attack. It's deep and we saw the power yesterday as well. That one's going to miss inside. So Reams trying to get things restarted here with two away. That pitch from Yakovich going to miss just low. And like you said, Stephen, a little different though in the start today as they've put up a crooked number here in the first inning rather than mm -hmm. just one or two runs. Um, as the Grenadiers already got their work cut out for them, but like we saw yesterday, they were able to erase a, uh, I believe, six-run deficit. So full count to Reams. Here, Yakovich, you don't want to get another base runner here. Try to ride the momentum, and that one will be fouled in the dugout. Oh, and a good play over there by Casey Cheek. No, just barehanding it. One second, he's over there having a conversation at the water cooler. Next, he's making a pretty pretty nice play. So he's, we'll give Katie some, Casey some love in there. Pitchers are athletes, too. That's what they say. <laughs> another payoff. That one, strike three. So the Bearcats are going to strike for four. But a good bounce back and turn of momentum as the Grenadiers stifle the threat and will head to the bottom half trailing by four. As normal, Slater Shield will lead things off for the Grenadiers. He'll face Johnny Foti. Four and one on the season with a 3.71 ERA, making his seventh start of the season. Set the Bearcat lineup, or defense rather, for you. Clemenson left, 
Miller in center, Quartz in right. And left to right around the infield here in just a second. That's a good breaking ball. So your third baseman is Gavin Reams. Troutman at short, Hubner at second. Benoit at first, and the battery with Foti is Bryce Gamble. That one misses high. Fodi's worked 26 and two-thirds innings. Only given up one home run in in that time. An opponent batting average of 272, 31 strikeouts, 21 walks. So maybe not the best control. Yeah, as he's fallen behind three and one here to shield. As the Grand Deers are going to need base runners early to try to erase the deficit. And that's going to be a leadoff walk. So exactly what the Grenadiers were looking for. You get a runner on in front of Mason White, and all of a sudden he can get the Grenadiers on the board with one swing of the bat. Yeah, and this is uh, one of the interesting things, you know, Logan and I had talked about, Stephen, is with Shield in that leadoff spot, if he's able to get on, he's obviously the most prolific base stealer that the Grenadiers have, but you, you don't necessarily always need him making that risk with Mason. Correct. So we'll see how that goes here in this one. And I think you've also, you don't want to give away any outs either, especially when you're already down 4 nothing. I can't imagine you're going to see Slater steal here. You're going to let White bat, see what happens, and then you can go from there, but. But at the same time, if you are able to get into scoring position, then the base knock is going to score someone with the speed of shield as he baited them and they yep. went with a pitch out. So good job by shield to, I guess, draw the attention over to him, which <laughs> Mason White's not the guy you want to not be focused on. No. If you do that, then he can deposit a ball over by the church up on the hill. 1-1 one, one pitch. Going to miss that one back out of play. It's a newly formed white, white flag shelter up there, and I think it's because they're trying to uh, surrender to as many balls that Mason keeps hitting towards them. <laughs> He's launched some missiles in his time here. But he faces a one and two count here from Fody. <laughs> Another throw over, but back in plenty of time with Shield. That one's going to be thrown. Is it going to stay fair? It is, and Shield was off on the pitch. He loses his helmet, and he's going to come around to score. So the Grenadiers are right back in this one as they're going to give themselves a run before even recording an out. So a manufactured, manufactured run right there, a little hit and run. White goes opposite way down the line, and Slater Shield scores easily. Yeah, and that's just a flick me battle swing there with two strikes. And I mean, that one hopped into the warning track. So that just shows you the type of strength and power that Mason does possess. Excuse me, rather. That'll make way for the Grenadier right fielder, Luke Powell, who had himself an absolute bomb yesterday, too. One thing to, I think, make note of, Stephen, is, and we were talking about it, so much focus was drawn away, even with two strikes to Mason White. You leave a pitch up a little too much where he's able to get a barrel on it, and that's what can happen. As that one is hit hard in the left center gap, is it going to go? It's got a chance. No, it's not. It's going to get down, but that's going to be a double as Miller ran into the fence, and he's down, so that's going to. May call the trainer out there if he's unable to get up. But it looks like he's up and shaking that off. 
And so that's going to be a ground rule double. Yeah. So Powell will head back to second. He ended up over at third base. He, he was on his yes, horse. Yes. A good effort there for Marco Miller. Just unable over the outstretched glove of him. So back-to-back -back extra base hits after the leadoff walk brings up Cody Putnam. And just, no one out in a runner on second and base. Just like that, the lead's already cut in half. Grenadier offense not quite in the type of hibernation they were yesterday. And a squared bunt, and that one's going to be fouled. An interesting decision there from Putnam as Grenadiers have already proven to just be a little locked in and extra base hit, extra base hit, and then just showing you their whole tool belt right here. Cody comes set, and we'll deliver the 0-1 to Putnam. One thing I know would drive uh, Ben real crazy, Fody lifting his leg and starting to go home while still looking at second base. That one's ingrained into me that that is a no-no. And I think, as you see, why has his attention drawn away and then throws one spiked in the dirt. Good eye by Putnam. And he's also not going to like the third baseman in at the edge of the grass either, I don't think. This early, anyway. Let's do a little inside move, but back in plenty of time. Luke Powell read that one very well. Two balls, one strike to Cody Putnam. Looking to keep the train rolling. Not too many players can I see down in the bullpen for us, and I know exactly who it is. But with that shiny bald head, that's no other than Cade Reynolds down there <laughs> hanging over the fence. Make sure he's got a good view, hopefully, of some more offensive action. And that's going to be ball four. Nice eye there by Putnam on a couple of those pitches to lay off. and He draws, draws a walk, keeps the line moving. I'll bring up the second baseman, Ethan Burdett. Burdett had a fantastic afternoon yesterday. Coming into the weekend, Burdett was hitting 363. Second on the team in total bases, right around an even 50. And Fody looking to try to get in the zone and unable and falls behind. And I think that's going to draw a conversation with head coach John Herbick. Burdett up to 359 after yesterday's play. Second on the team, Mason White hitting 433 with 12 home runs. So the umpire going to refill on baseballs. Conversation has concluded. We'll see if the words from the skipper are able to help his pitcher. As Burdett steps back in with a 1-0 count. Bodie back into the zone. Cody Putnam at first, Luke Powell at second. Fredette out in front of that one. Hits it off the cap. He 
if you're Foti, you got it. Attack Burdett here. You can't give up another base hit, probably score another run. Yeah, with the speed of Powell, anything to the outfield is likely a run. The one-two pitch. Good fight off there. Burdett wasn't a huge fan of the breaking ball, so he just will spoil it and get another crack. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Two runs in, two on. Bodie has his sign. That breaking ball well outside. That one high, but Burdett's going to battle it off and hit that over the the old train tracks beyond the third baseline. So the shortstop Troutman hanging very close to Powell at second, so maybe look, see a pickoff move. And I think Troutman wanted one there as he was sitting on second base waiting for the throw before mm -hmm. Fody delivered. It's going to be a full count to Burdett. In this situation may even look for a double steal from the Grenadiers. And there it is, and that's going to be a pseudo hit and run. Popped up though, so both runners scamper back to their respective bases quickly. Yeah, it's Hubner there to make the catch. And that will be the first out for the Grenadiers, so. Brescia wins the battle of who can score more before they record their first out. <laughs> And apparently this is going to be a game where it's who's going to, which pitchers are going to lock in first. Both starters having a little trouble here in the first inning. And Max Flock now will step in. And that one's going to get off the glove, so that's going to be an error on Fody and allow both runners to advance. And this is where you're so focused on the base runners that you just make a mistake, and now you've compounded the issue. Both runners now in scoring position off of a bad pickoff throw. And, and it was an interesting, I mean, and we'd mentioned Troutman had been – right around second base the I mean for about the last seven eight pitches that one buzzes the tower of flock um, but that time he w he wasn't really that close to second base as comparatively yeah. to what he had been and instead of an inside move Fody decides to go with a jump turn which is a quicker move and just not there in time with Troutman off the end of his glove and into center field but he'll settle in here to face Flock and a healthy hack by Max Flock. But you just got Burdett to pop out, keep the runners at their stations, and you throw the ball into center field as opposed to going after the base runner. Or after, after the batter, rather. See what he can do here with a 1-2 pitch. That one well outside. Anything through the infield will score two for the Grenadiers. Flock looks to battle. That breaking ball didn't have a chance. Another full count for Fody. Mm -hmm. 
And the payoff pitch. Right by him, swung on and missed for, by Flock. So big strikeout there for Fody. Blows it right past him after a, there was a healthy hack there in earlier and then a couple of just really non-competitive pitches and then able to bounce back and get the strikeout. That's well done by Fody. Now be up to Logan Murphy to try to see if he can't tie this game now with two outs. So it's going to take a base hit. Already 30 pitches for Fody here in the first. A lot of deep counts, Steven. That one's hit high. Is it going to stay in play? No, it is not out of play. And we saw this yesterday with Schaefer where he fell behind quite a bit for the Grenadiers early in his start, drove up his pitch count, and it really wasn't until the fifth inning, fourth or fifth inning, where he was able to kind of be more economical with his pitches. But kept the Grenadiers in the contest and they were able to rally late. That's what Fody has to do here is limit the damage and hopefully keep the lead intact. Exactly. And he's ahead one and two to the Grenadier backstop. See if Fody can extinguish the threat. A good breaking ball, but a good hold from Murphy. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Two already in here for the Grenadiers. Would love to make that three or four. That one's going to be hit well. That's got a chance with the wind blowing out. Gone! A three-run homer for Logan Murphy. Murphy just sent that one up into the wind tunnel there and out to left and puts the Grenadiers in front. Five to four, a wild first inning here as IU Southeast comes all the way back. Yeah, Murphy, a good battle there. Gets down in the count, able to drop back to two and two, and that didn't look like a defensive two-strike swing to me, Steven. No, and he gets his first home run of the season and his 16th RBI. So well done there by the Grindier catcher. Brayden Hazelwood. Going to try to restart things with two outs, as the Grenadiers love to do so often. As going to maybe have to task our uh, statistician expert, Logan Stevens, with seeing how many runs the Grenadiers have scored with two outs this year. I don't know quite how you'd figure that out, but if anyone could, I think it's going to be Logan. Well, we know we can't go to Presto for that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> maybe have to phone a friend in the form of Randy Payton to see if he's got any contacts over at the Presto office, see if they can do an advance report. He's on a list. <laughs> Healthy hack, cut on and missed by Hazelwood. Count now two and one. We're going to have to do the, the computing ourselves. We'll get our crack staff on it and see if we can figure that out. 2-1 breaking ball, not competitive from Fody, so 3-1. and one. Just as Fody thought he was about to get out of the inning and keep the lead intact, the greener catcher had different plans, and now he's behind to the designated hitter. And that one's going to catch the top left corner of the zone. I will say this umpire's called a couple up and in pitches for strikes that he seems to like that, that spot. The payoff from Fody. Going to be strike three. So good bounce back by Fody, but not for the Grenadiers. 
get the lead right back. So we got nine total runs in the first inning as we head to the top of the second here in New Albany. Grenadiers lead this one 5-4. to four. Hugo Benoit, the Bearcat first baseman. See if he can't get the offense restarted for Brescia as they saw their four-run lead in the first extinguished and almost immediately. That one hit high, and it, with this wind, it's got a chance back, and that's going to get out of here. So just as we talk about it, this one's retied. A home run out to right for Ben Waugh. His first of the season. Only his third RBI as well, so maybe not the most uh, the player you're looking at for the offense there, but he's able to jump on a pitch and send it out to right and tie the game. Kaysen Troutman watches his first pitch for inside ball. Not exactly what you love if you're uh, Tyler Yakovic. Teammates belly out a little bit, gets you the lead immediately after giving up four, and then you just give it right back. But again, if you're him, okay, it's a new game. Just get some outs, put some uh, innings together here, and it looks like the offense is locked in here early, so you've got that behind you. And a good, good breaking ball back. there for strike three. Yeah, so that'll turn the lineup back to the top for Marco Miller. Third strikeout of the day for Jakovic. Marco jumped on the first pitch he saw in this one. He's got to swing at the second pitch he sees, but not put it in play this time. Is a good breaking ball there from Yakovich. Gets him ahead in the count. Marco Miller did come into this weekend as the uh, third best batting average on the Brescia team. But definitely a speed threat as he does have a team leading 18 stolen bases. And he's very solid defensively. Absolutely. Uh, he was does very have impressive a, uh, yesterday. An even 1,000 fielding percentage. So, And not the guy you want to put on base for free, but Jakovic is going to do that. So that'll bring up Gavin Hubner. We'll see if Miller's going to take off. Squared bunt pulled back, but it's going to be a called strike. Throw down, not, not in time. Let's 
see how Yakovic is able to manage the run game. Back in plenty of time is Marco Miller. Little change of pace on that pickoff. Tried to maybe catch him sleeping during his getting his lead, but he was back in time. And he's off this time. Just kidding. But that's going to be a strikeout as Hubner's going to swing and miss. So, a pair of strikeouts here in the top half of the second for Yakovic. And then bluff there by. Miller to draw a throw, but able to get back. Now the Bearcat pitcher looking to try to help himself. I'm a little surprised he hasn't gone yet. May see some action here. Another bluff. That one's going to be fouled down the third baseline. Yeah, and I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily hate the the risk of running here, Stephen. Um, you have your three, four due up, so the risk reward is you get a guy into scoring position with the middle of your order up. The if he is thrown out, then you're restarting the next right. inning with the middle of your order. So I don't hate it, but we'll see what John Herbig decides to do. Waste pitch there from Yakovich makes the count one and two. That one cut on and missed. A good inning to bounce back by Yakovich after the solo shot from Benoit. This one is tied, heading to the bottom of the second, five to five. Colin Long will lead things off for the Grenadiers. Hitting in the nine spot today. So he will turn things over one way or another 
as Fody delivers a first pitch that's smoked in the left, and that's going to get down past a diving Clements. And with the speed of Long, we'll see how much he can run. He's off to third, and I think it's just going to be a triple. But it's going to be a stand-up triple by Colin Long to lead things off. As he uh, was he fle flexing before, before he, he got, got to, to third that. base, yeah, about the cutout, decided to throw up a double armed flex. That's a first for me. I I've never seen, seen that, that either. That's I've also never hit a triple down left field line on the first pitch I've seen in college. So I'll give him that one. Did you hit a triple ever? Do don't ask follow up questions, Stephen. As we <laughs> turn the lineup over to Slater Shield. <laughs> so the Grenadiers already with runner in scoring position. They're trying their best to match Brescia. Um, their leadoff hitter in the top half had a home run. Colin Long decided to go with a triple. See if they can get the runner across. First pitch to Shield is going to be hit to short. But the throw will be in time. So not exactly what you love to see, OO. Not a productive out, no. But that makes way for the Grenadier RBI leader, Mason White. And they're going to intentionally walk Mason White. Not Probably not the worst decision I've ever seen with a couple bases open. Nope. But with the way Powell's been swinging the bat, too. It's definitely a pick-your-poison situation here for the Bearcats. Powell smoked a ground rule double into left center in his first at bat. Would love to find extra bases again. There's some action down in the brush of bullpen. Number 14, Thomas Clark. So we'll see how long the leash for Johnny Fody is going to be. Game still tied, but Grenadier's knocking on the door. And White is off, and the throw is going to be off the glove of Troutman, and that's going to allow Long to score. And really, White got such a good jump, that play was not going to be made anyway. But the throw off the glove into center field, long scores. White's now at second after the stolen base. Yes. I mean, White had such a good jump, I'm not quite yeah. sure why you'd even throw it. you got to put that one in your pocket. But the Grenadiers have another runner in scoring position. Just one away, and Powell is quickly ahead in the count, 3-0. and And he comes unglued on that one, but he's going to swing right through it. As Powell had the green light, and he was going to only do one thing with it. 13th stone base for Mason White. Bodie comes set, and will deliver a 3-1. That one's going to miss high for ball four. Cody Putnam trying to get going offensively. Started off the season pretty hot. Kind of cooled off a little bit. As much as I guess you can say anyone on this offense has cooled off. In a huge hole. 
on the left side of the infield there with shortstop holding on white. Yeah, I mean, 20 hopper through the six hole is going to score Mason White. So we'll see if Putnam is able to deliver and extend this Grenadier lead. Good hold. So back-to-back -back breaking balls from Fody. Count is even. Ooh, gracious call is that one. That was in the other other batter's box. That's yeah, a tough call for Putnam, but he's going to have to battle here with two strikes. Got to make him swing the bat, I guess. Because <laughs> the first call was a little inside, so he's going to be the recipient of a wide strike zone in this at bat. That one going to be poked into center and a good job with two strikes by Putnam as they're going to stop Mason White and the bases will be loaded. As that was hit off the end enough that White had to make sure it wasn't going to get caught by the shortstop before he just taken off. He loops it in the center there to load the bases. The sacks are packed for Ethan Burdett. I wasn't expecting that twice today, Stephen, but we'll take it. <laughs> As Ethan Burdett is going to look to get his first hit of the contest. See if he fares better this time with runners in scoring position. Grenier's trying to extend this lead, get a little breathing room here. Yeah, I think this is a this is a big at bat for Burdett just to really put the pressure on Brescia. Yep. Well, and I mean, we you know if you're IU Southeast, you need some length here from Jakovic, even if he doesn't have his good stuff today. You you know, don't know what's going to happen in game three. Don't even know who the starter's going to be at this point. At least we don't. Uh, so, got to get some insurance runs here and hopefully. That one's hit up the middle. That's going to be tough to double off Burdett, but they're going to do it. So, three more left on by Burdett, and that's going to do it for the Grenadiers. But they are going to take the lead back. So, they head to the top of the third, 6-5, IU Southeast. Djokovic back out for his third inning of work. Hopefully his uh, 
progression continues as crooked number, single number, hopefully he can throw up a zero here in the top of the third. He needs a quick inning, already up to 46 pitches. Which for any of you that follow IU Southeast Baseball, um, his last outing against Brescia was about 56 pitches in a seven-inning complete game no-hitter. So it appears that Brescia took taking that personally <laughs> in the, their offensive uh, explosion in the first inning. Yeah, they were uh, in no mood to see that happen, anything close to that happen again. And a tough play, throw on the run, and a good pick by Max Flock. So great defense all around on that one as Shield comes in and backhands a little Manny Machado-esque, mm. minus the absolute hose. Just got rid of it quickly, which is really all you need to do. I like that. And a nice play on the other end by Flock to pick that one out and get the first out of the inning. Catcher Bryce Gamble. Step in. Yakovich able to get the leadoff man out for the first time today. Healthy swing and a miss. Yakovich showing shades of a uh, of settling in. It's going to take more than just a batter or two to really establish that. And a good swing and a miss there. Or a good pitch, rather, to entice the swing and a miss. He records his sixth strikeout, so you're right. Maybe he's worked through some things and has figured some stuff out here as he tries to navigate the third. Kendall Quartz comes up now with two away, and he's going to take a swing and a miss at his first pitch. I mean, the... The approach for the Brescia offense is pretty clear. They're going to attack early. Yakovic, traditionally a strike thrower, likes to get ahead early in counts. They're just trying to counteract his scouting report. And it worked well up till this point. Quartz falls behind one and two. Yakovich would love nothing more than a quick inning. The pitch. That one's going to be fouled off, so we'll have another. Yeah, I mean, there were really two goals here for Yakovich in this inning. Keep the lead and work quickly, get through the inning quickly. He's a pitch away from doing that. Oh, that almost hits him. Quartz dances a little bit. Very athletic maneuver. Two, two. Cut on and missed. A good inning there by Yakovich. As the Bearcats go down in order, and we'll head to the bottom of the third. Six to five, IU Southeast.
Max Flock will get things started for IU Southeast on the bottom of the third. Fody will also have his third inning of work. Bullpen does appear still active for Brescia. John Herbig going to give his starter an opportunity to settle in, however. Up to 55 pitches for Fody. Much better second inning than a first. And yeah, that one's high, but Flock's going to chase it. He is swinging for the fences today. Wind has settled a little bit. The one, two. Not quite sure where that one missed, but Flock's going to get another life. Thought that was strike three for sure, not going to lie. See what he can do with his extra life. And it's going to be the same result anyway. So swing and a miss, strike three. And as Yakovich did in the top half, Bodie able to retire his first leadoff batter of the game. And he's probably happy there's nobody on base as he faces Logan Murphy for the second time, who gave the Grenadiers the lead in the bottom of the first with a two-out, two-strike home run to left center, his first of the year. That one hit through the six hole. Just out of the reach of the third baseman Reams, who made a good effort to dive for that one, but going to have a base runner here. And it'll be a courtesy runner, Grant Shepard, running for the Grenadier catcher at first base. So Murphy now two for two. Home run and a single. Having a nice Saturday afternoon so far. Shepard runs for him. And now Hazelwood. And they're going to take a second. Ball on the field down in the visitor's bullpen side. Happens quite a bit here, but not too much to the, uh, to the fault of the visiting team as not the most ideal situation being that close to the playing field in the bullpen. Yeah, not a lot of foul territory here. And that one's just tucked in along the right field line. It's going to be a breaking ball. Called strike. Hazelwood didn't love it. Hazelwood has not been thrilled with the strike zone so far today. <laughs> As they'll check over on Shepard again. But back in plenty of time. That one buckled Hazelwood a little bit. So quickly 0-2. See if Hazy can battle with two strikes. Three straight breaking balls. That the best of the three, honestly. But a good job from Hazelwood to lay off that one. Shepard modest lead over at first, and he's off. That one's going to be high, and a good throw by Gamble, but not going to be in time as it's going to get away from Hubner. Good job by Troutman to back that up, not allow Shepard to advance any further. Second stolen base of the season for Shepard. He's two for two. The Wiley freshman. Now running scoring position for Braden Hazelwood. See if he can cash in. The pitch. Ooh. Another breaking ball. That one freezes him for strike three. Strikeout number four for Fody. C 
see if Colin Long can deliver like he did in his last at bat. And you mentioned this earlier, but a massive hole on the left side of the infield as Troutman is holding Shepard very close on second. One zero pitch from Fody. Healthy hack by Long, as that breaking ball just kind of spun a little bit top the zone and must have looked like a size of a beach ball, but unable to connect. Fody developed a little bit of feel for that breaking ball as we've seen a heavy dose of it here in the third. Four straight breaking balls is what got Brayden Hazelwood, or five straight rather. Goes back to the fastball there, is fouled out of play. Two balls, two strikes, two outs for Colin Long, also number 22. That one's hit down the line. That's going to get foul. That one hit better than I thought off the bat, but foul regardless. That one's going to miss low and outside. Fody was walking well off. He thought that was strike three for sure. Imagine after that reaction, anything close. Probably not going to get the benefit of the doubt from the home plate umpire. One's going to catch a and he's saying, a, I think it's a foul ball. He's saying it hit his bat. Yep. As he is going to go have a conference, saying it hit, I don't know how that could have hit the bat, honestly. And it is going to hit him in the elbow guard. So, Yeah, it definitely hit some sort of manufactured product, whether it was a bat or the elbow guard. <laughs> and they got that one right. It hit the elbow guard. Didn't hit skin. No. And uh, Herbig's trying to plead his case, which – Especially after a call's overturned, not not gonna anything come from the conversation rather. Unless maybe he's just trying to say that he was over the plate. Anyways, we will Flip the line up over to the top for IU Southeast. And Slater Shield will step in with a couple ducks on the pond, two outs. Right back to the breaking ball for Fody. And I can see with Herbig, you know, you're trying to get any, any advantage you can. You don't want the top of the order coming up with runners on here. So if anything, anything, just a foul ball and you try and go after Long again. But instead, he'll take his base. And, and now you have plus runners on first and second. Correct. Fody's done a good job to bounce back, however, and get ahead of 
Shield, 0-2. See if Shield can find something through the infield. He will not as that one's cut on and missed. So another good breaking ball by Fody. It's going to strand him and leave the Grenadier scoreless for the first time. So score remains 6-5 to five, heading to the top of the fourth here in New Albany. Gavin Reams will lead things off for Brescia. As both teams throw up a zero in the third inning, the first for each ball club, that one misses low, I guess. Yep. Zone from the home plate umpire here in game one has been interesting, I'll say. Curious. But I will say both starters able to bounce back and put up scoreless innings in the third. That's really what both coaching staffs were looking for here. I think also what you were looking for as far as pace of play goes. Well, that didn't really <laughs> that didn't really help a lot. As it's two as we played 3 innings in an hour and 15 minutes. So pack a lunch people. Good to seem there from Jakovic. But if if both the starters, you know, wanted any sort of <laughs> link to the uh, outing. They needed quick innings in the third, and they were able to get that. And a nice start here in the fourth for Yakovich. Yeah, freezes Reams with the front door breaking ball. Best breaking ball of the afternoon for Yakovich. But that'll bring up the, uh, I guess, power threat. Hugo Benoit, who went yard in his last at bat, his first of the year. And he's going to try to do the same as that one's hit high and out of play. I thought off the bat that one was going to be a lot closer to staying in play. but That's what I get for assuming, Stephen. You should not do that. Shouldn't. Anyways, own one here to Benoit. Another good breaking ball there. That will be fouled back out of play. Yakovich up to 64 pitches. I believe he is about to, if he hasn't already, eclipsed his entire complete game total from last year. <laughs> oh, I was I was locked in ready for that one, Stephen. You flinched just so everyone knows. Oh, uh, I was going to dive right <laughs> under this. <laughs> just making sure the listeners are aware how big you flinched there. Yeah. I would have saved you if I was closer. I don't think you were going to make that play at all. No, I wasn't, but I was ready. <laughs> An 0-2 pitch. That Ooh. one's hit well and hit high. Off the handle just a bit as long as they're camped under it to make the out. So a quick two for IU Southeast. As that brings up the nine-hole hitter, Kaysen Troutman. And if Yakovich can get through the inning here, I'm just going to – I'm fascinated to see how – Neffendorf deploys the bullpen here for the rest of the game. I would think Yakovich can go maybe another inning or two. But you had uh, Canoes throw two innings yesterday. I can't imagine he's available. Don't know about Garrett Hill. Casey Cheek threw an inning. I would assume Cade Reynolds is going to be the game two starter, but we don't know. 
So it'll just be interesting to see who's available in the bullpen today and how he kind of mixes and matches to get through this game and then knowing he's got another game to get through here later this afternoon. Absolutely. As that one's going to be down the line, bud, just foul. Troutman trying to make things interesting with two outs. Yakovich has other ideas. The one two pitch. Just misses. And now, now both pitchers are, <laughs> are wondering where the strike zone is. And Yak will hit the bowl on that one, so full count to Troutman. Overcook that a little. And now it's two and two. Yeah, not not too often do you uh, necessarily have too bad of a, a day behind the plate as an umpire, but this not his best work. That one's going to be fouled off down the first baseline. Troutman walks back. It is 2-2, two -two, not 3-2. Two, that's on me. 2-2 two -two pitch. That one's going to be hit high. And making the play is Powell. So a missed call not going to come back to bite Yakovich as he's going to get out of it and throw up another zero. So we'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. IU Southeast leads 6-5. to five. Mason White will lead things off in the bottom of the fourth. IU Southeast trying to get the offense restarted. And needing to tack, tack on some insurance runs here in the fourth. He's first pitch swinging. Pody continuing, continuing rather to, to grind through and just give his team some innings. That one's hit high. It's going to be in play. 
Clements is under it there to make the catch. Yeah, both starters just battling here. Neither one has their best stuff here today, but hanging in here and Fody getting a the leadoff batter and a tough out here and, and White retired. Luke Powell will get another crack at it. Turned into a beautiful day here in New Albany. A nice 75 degrees currently, Stephen. Gorgeous afternoon for baseball. One of the, well, uh, probably the best of the season so far. Yeah, it's up there. I'd say top three at least. We did have the, what, February 7th, 4th, whatever it was, 70-degree day. So that was cool for the season opener. Powell takes that one to move the count to 3-0. and That one room service, but not a 3-0 green light this time for Powell. That one's hit well, but Miller's got a beat on it, and he's going to make the catch. So that one hit right on the screws, but a good play out there by the Brescia center fielder to get the second out. Now Cody Putnam, one for one today. See if he can extend the inning. Healthy cut and miss on a breaking ball there by Fody. Breaking ball been the big difference in turning this one around for the Brescia right-hander. As we've mentioned, he's gone to that heavy amount here as of late. That one's hit high. Not the easiest to play with this wind, but over to make the catch is Troutman. So three up, three down for the Grenadiers as we'll head to the top of the fifth. Score remains six to five. We return to the top of the lineup for Brescia as Marco Miller steps in for his third time. He is one for one with a walk. And that one's healthy hat cut on and missed. Djokovic still out. 
Would love to find another quick inning to try to extend his afternoon. Good breaking ball there. Half-hearted swing by Miller. Jakovic off to a good start here, one and two. Seems to have settled in, seems to have found some control of the breaking ball in particular. And they're going to say that he went. So another half-hearted swing by Miller, but that one is for strike three. Strikeout number nine now. Gavin Hubner step in for his third at bat. Third time through the lineup for Brescia. And as you mentioned, Jakovic seems to have figured it out, so he's getting stronger as he's gone on. Good breaking ball. That one's going to miss outside. That one's going to be fouled back off the screen. Uh, 2 2. That one's going to be chopped to Putnam, and he's going to wait. He's going to have to get rid of it. Strong throw in time. We'll get Hubner at first. Nice play there by Putnam. You're right. He had to wait on it, but fired a strike across. Route number two. Now the pitcher, Fody. Trying to do some kind of a uh, mixing equation up here on the soundboard as somehow getting some feedback from a radio station. First pitch fouled straight up. Going to be out of play behind the press box by Fody. Not quite sure how that happened, Stephen. Yeah, I... Makes no sense to me. As that one misses, I, I'm I'm generally very gracious towards umpire Steven, but the zone has been a coin flip so far in game one. Questionable for sure. So two and one. To Fody. That one's going to be chopped. Putnam going to have to come in. Cut off by Shield. Throw on the run. And that's going to be three up and three down. Nice play there by Shield to come all the way in. And then a great throw across. Ends the inning. So we'll head to the bottom half of the fifth. Score still 6 5 Grenadiers.
Ethan Burdett will get another crack at it. 0 for 2 to this point. as we do have a new pitcher for Brescia. And the first pitch is going to be chopped over the head of Reams at third, and that's going to be extra bases for Burdett. As one pitch for the new pitcher, Thomas Clark, and he's going to give up an extra base hit. <laughs> About as softly hit as you're going to find is that one just kind of chopped over the head of Reams. Clark making... His 10th appearance, he started one game, thrown 25 and two-thirds innings, has a 7.36 ERA, 18 strikeouts, he, yeah, 18 strikeouts to nine walks. That'll bring up Max Flock, and that's going to catch a piece of Flock. So... Not the best start for Clark. Very quickly, two on, nobody out. A little chopper that turns into a double, and then a hit by pitch. Logan Murphy has an opportunity, maybe for his second three-run homer of the game. Regardless, a couple people on. And nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. Grenadiers desperately looking for some insurance. But going to square around a bunt is Murphy. So that will be foul. Squaring around a bunt again. That one will miss high. I mean, with the – you've shown really early on a couple bunt attempts, um, which has created the defense to show play their hand, and there's a massive hole on the left side. So it could yeah. be an opportunity to pull back and slash, but he's not going to, and that's going to get down right to the third baseman. And that's going to go down as a 5-4 sack bunt for Murphy. So now Trevor Goodman will pinch hit for Hazelwood. Yeah, Goodwin was the designated hitter in game one of this series. Hazelwood gets the start in game two, but like you said, in will come Trevor. Looking to get something to drive. As with uh, the type of wind we have today, he's definitely a candidate to be able to find himself around Tripper. But he'll take a barrel regardless. And it's going to be a, not a barrel off the end of the bat, but that's going to be a two-run single <laughs> as that is maybe the softest ball outside of a bunt <laughs> I've ever seen Trevor Goodwin hit. I and agree. it's still going to account for two RBIs. It'll look like a line drive <laughs> in the box score, but a cool cue shot. Drives in a couple. Lead grows to three for IU Southeast. Also, that's – can't tell you how many times I've seen Trevor Goodwin swing in first pitch either. Traditionally a more patient hitter. Usually will put together a really good at-bat. Oh, breaking ball. Goodwin. Back in time. Long did square to bunt. It's, I assume in this situation, def, I mean, it's obviously looking to be for a hit. Has set up off the handle. That's going to get down. So another base knock for IU Southeast as Long picks up another hit today. And got a couple ducks on the pond for the top of the order. 
So the bottom part of this lineup comes through again. Manufactures a couple more runs and now Shield and White should have opportunities here to expand on this Grenadier lead. Yeah, breaking ball in there. Even with a new pitcher, we have a, another heavy dose of a breaking ball. And Shield's going to find that one through the six hole. We'll see if Goodwin's going to go. And it's going to be misplayed. He was going to go anyway, so... That's going to be an RBI single for Slater Shield. And, the, and finally, the Grinders take advantage of that huge hole on the left side, and Shield just hits a ball right through it. Now runners at the corners with one away for White. And looks like there's going to be a players' conference at the mound. Maybe just try to regroup and settle in the, uh, the reliever for Brescia. So the conversation has concluded. Mason would love to join the hit parade. And Shields off on the first pitch. Throw down. Going to get through. And that will be another stolen base for Shield and then the air on the catcher. That will allow Long to score and Shield to go to third. So the Grenadiers finally putting some pressure on this Brescia defense and they've been able to take advantage of some misplays and add on a couple of runs. Yeah, is that one, that's going to be a tough air for, for Gamble. As that throw was right over the bag, just... Infielders late getting there as they bring the infield in. and <laughs> Not the place I'd like to be with Mason wide up, especially on that pull side. As Ben Reel says, uh, you might want to put your catcher's gear on if you're going to have to draw in here against Mason White. 1-1 one, one from Clark. And that's a good pitch there. So he gets ahead of White. Looking for the second out of the inning. Breaking ball hit well. Carrying out there and catching it is Clements, but that's going to be a sack fly for Mason as Shield will come around to score. So lead grows to five with the score. Ten to five, I do believe. Eleven to five now. Eleven to five. I missed one somewhere. So 11 to 5, my apologies, as Luke Powell steps in. See if he can't get things restarted with two, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Still have quite, quite a ways to go, but you know we talked about the the lack of you know pitching depth for Grenadiers due to some injuries this this weekend. You'd love to see if you can shorten this game by a couple innings. It's going to take some more offensive production, obviously, but as the lead has grown to six, I think that at least conversation starts to creep in. Yeah, I think if you can. You know, okay, you need four more runs to put it in a run rule situation. You're batting at least one more time. 
you've got an opportunity here to to do that if you're if your pitchers, I would assume it still be Yakovich, can put together another scoreless frame. But I, that's why I like the aggressiveness on the base pass there to put the pressure on the defense, maybe get a steal a run here and there. Yeah, the 2 2 pitch here to Powell. That one's going to be in. That's going to hit him. Running up Cody Putnam again. Greener showing a little additional life and off on the pitch is Powell. Good throw by Gamble, but not in time as unable to hang on to it is Hubner as well. I think he may have beaten the throw anyway, or beaten the tag, rather. Beaten the tag, yep. Pal now three for three in stolen bases. So runner in scoring position with two outs for Putnam. And a pickoff move, and they... Not going to get him as an evasive slide, but a good effort there by Clark as I thought Powell's dead to rights. Yeah, I thought he was a dead duck there, but able to evade the tag. Powell trying to get a little too aggressive, especially with two outs already in scoring position. That's an unnecessary risk. Good spit on a breaking ball there for Putnam. That one's going to be clinked off the glove of Gamble. So Powell will be able to move into third after all, after the pass ball. Another insurance run just 90 feet away for the Grenadiers. That one yanked into the left-handed batter's box as well by Clark. So he falls behind three and one. And the pitch. And it'll be ball four. So Grenadier's not going quietly into the good night here with two outs. Now Burdett will have another opportunity to uh, drive in some runners in scoring position here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Putnam tries to move himself into scoring position as well. I bet he'll be off very quickly. Not on the first pitch. Burdett one for three today. Yeah, because I, I think the... The question comes into, do you try to straight steal to move into scoring position, but you, you already have someone in scoring position with two outs is where I think the risk comes in there. But that one's going to. And now it's going to be a moot point. And that one's going <laughs> to. A blind slinging throw bounced off the back of the umpire. So, I mean, good effort to try to make up for the mistake by Gamble, but another pass ball as the lead is going to grow to seven. So Putnam does move into scoring position. A 2-0 pitch to Burdett. Chop foul.
pitch from Clark. That one well high. The action has stalled, at least momentarily, for Brescia down in the bullpen. That one hit to Reams, and that's going to be off of him, and that's going to bounce into left field, so Putnam's going to score easily. Burdett's going to cruise in to second base, so another run for IU Southeast as scores now 13-5. to five. That one hit sharply, but I don't know if it's sharply enough to not credit an error to, yeah, to Reams. I, I think it's, a, it's still an error. And an unfortunate two base errors that bounced right off of him into a little extended shallow left field as that yep. rolled quite a ways. John Herbig going to go have a visit at the mound. We'll see if there will be a pitching change. Hasn't made the signal yet. And we are going to have a pitching change. So we'll step away as the Grenadiers' lead has extended here in the bottom of the fifth. Score 13 to 5. We'll be back in a moment. New pitcher for Brescia is number 16, Braden Earnspiker. Earnspiker, the freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Pseudo home game for the for the Bearcat. As his first pitch to Max Flock will be high for ball one. Grenadiers putting up a seven spot so far and threatening for more. And Flock didn't like that one and called strike anyway. The 1 1 pitch from Ernst Spiker. That one's going to be fouled back. Flock just a tick off today. Seeing a lot of, a lot of balls fouled out of play over the third base dugout. Burdett, your runner at second. Count is two and two. 
And another one fouled back out of play over the third base dugout. If he's nothing but consistent today, oh, Steven. He's been very, very consistent today. As that one hit, a little squib shot off the handle. Burdett going all the way, and he's going to be out at home. So uh, an aggressive send by third base coach Joe Natterman. But Granders are going to score seven here in the bottom of the fifth. So we'll head to the top of the sixth. Your score is 13-5, to five, IU Southeast. slew of defensive changes for IU Southeast. I'm just going to reset your Grenadier defense as Yakovich comes out for his sixth inning of work. And first pitch to Clements. Skied and uh, left side of the infield. Putnam there to make the catch. So one pitch, one out for Yakovich. Left to right in the outfield is Makai Stoner. Luke Powell will shift from right to center field, and replacing him in right is Grant Shepard. Left side of your infield will remain the same in the form of Shield at third at Putnam at shortstop. As Coulter Hamilton will sh slot in at second base, and Connor Scheidt at first. So your catcher remains Logan Murphy. And that one's going to catch a piece of the New, New catcher. catcher, yeah, Josh Cossett. So we'll have a courtesy runner, number 24, Darnell Coleman. Kendall Quartz will face Yakovich again. Healthy hack there by Quartz. Coleman getting a very, very modest lead over at first. Yakovich up to 92 pitches now. So, I yeah. believe is what that. Yep. So. you got to believe this will be his last inning. Can he get through it or not will be the exactly. question. Yep. There is action down in the Grenadier bullpen. Appears to be Cade Rush. Mize are good, but they're not great. Yep, that is who it is. 
So Rush looking to be the next Grenadier pitcher. Yakovic hoping to push that out as far as he can, but a good battle here by Quartz could expedite it. As he approaches the 100 pitch mark, we'll see how much over that, if any, Brett Neffendorf will let his right-hander go. Another one, too. That one hit on the screws out to Powell. And that's going to get over his head, so that's going to be extra bases. So a hit batsman and then a double from Quartz as runners on second and third for Brescia. Just smoked right over the head of Luke Powell there. Yeah, the wind blowing straight out to center. Makes that a more difficult read than normal. That'll bring up the third baseman, Gavin Reams. See if Yakovich can wiggle his way out of this. Not doing a good job so far as he falls behind Reams 2-0. Good battle back to even up the count. Two balls and two strikes. Yakovich comes set and delivers. Breaking ball, cut on and missed. Strike three. And Reem strikes out for the third time today. He's going to be having nightmares about Jakovic tonight. Strikeout number 10 for Tyler. And Neff is going to stick with the right-hander, at least as of now, to face Hugo Benoit. Yakovic delivers. Good breaking ball there. See if he can escape. And he will. That one's going to be strike three called. So after a couple base runners and the double by courts, Yak strands the runners in scoring position to keep this lead at seven, or eight rather, eight, eight, as yep. we head to the bottom of the sixth, IU Southeast, 13 to five.
Logan Murphy will step in to face the pitcher for Brescia. Not a new pitcher. The guy that came in the last inning. Ern Spiker, breaking ball by him. He's going to miss outside. Getting into the late part of this one. Grenadiers with the expanded lead. You know, and like we mentioned earlier, Stephen, you'd love to see if you can't save a couple innings out of the bullpen, but that's still going to take some more offense from the Grenadiers. Yeah, this is a pretty – important inning honestly for the rest of the series just because you want to limit the bullpen usage as much as you can here. If you can distract, scratch across a couple runs, run rule them, maybe only have to use two pitchers in game one when it looked like you may have to use three or four, that's a definitely a positive. 2-2 two -two pitch. That one's hit well into left center and that's going to get down and that's going to get by Miller in center so that's going to be extra bases. Murphy coming around, and he's going for three. It's going to be close. The throw from Troutman, not in time. He turns on the Jets there and cruises into third with a triple. He's got the two hardest legs of the cycle. Not sure. What else does he have on the day, Steven? Let's see. He's got a uh, single, I believe. So he's got a, is he just double I short? I think he's just double short, yeah. Trevor Goodwin comes in. Good breaking ball there. From Ern Spiker. Goodwin replaced Hazelwood as the designated hitter. That one popped high. See if they'll challenge him as Yurt's running for Murphy. And he's going, throws, going to be up the line. So that's going to be a sacrifice fly for Trevor Goodwin. So Goodwin does his job, drives in another run, and the Grenadier lead expands to nine. That'll bring up Makai Stoner. Stoner replaced... Calling long and left. And we'll bat for the first time today. That was a stone cold take there. I thought that was going to clip him, but he didn't even flinch out of the way at all. Nope. Aaron Spiker battles back there for strike one. Count now two and one. That mm, one's going to hit that, Stoner. That did clip it. Not the guy you want to just put on base for free. As I do know when they did some preseason testing, Stoner's sprint speed is north of 20 miles an hour. So definitely one that can fly. Gabe Yanto will hit here, I believe, In for shield. shield. Yep. Huge cut there by Gabe Yanto. This will be only his sixth at bat of the season, looking for his first hit. Good 12-6 breaking ball there from Ern Spiker. Yeah. 
Whoa. They're saying he foul tipped the ball into the glove. And he's out. Tough look there for the umpire. So I guess that's going to be a foul tip yep. strikeout. Yep. Grant Shepard steps in for his first at bat as he entered the game for Mason White. Throw over a check on Stoner. Nothing brewing. That one's going to be fielded by Ben Juan. A good play there by Aaron Spiker is going to get Shepard over at first. So the Grenadiers scratch one as they grow their lead to nine as we head to the top of the seventh. Your score, 14-5, to five, IU Southeast. New pitcher for IU Southeast will be sophomore right-hander Cade Rush. Rush makes his ninth appearance of the season. He's worked six and a third innings, has a 5.88 ERA. Four strikeouts, seven walks. Troutman steps in, and he's ready, ready to swing as he'll foul that first pitch back off the press box. Cade's 0-2 so far on the year. Yeah, it's going to be a breaking ball and catch a piece. That'll turn the lineup over for Brescia. Marco Miller will get another crack at it. Back-to-back -back breaking balls, that's going to hit people. Not the start you're looking for for Cade Rush. Got 
Gavin Hubner steps in with a pair of runners on. I think you could probably set fastball here. I hope that's what's coming. It is, and it's high. That one almost catches Hubner. Rush is going to have to figure this one out in a hurry. Yeah, you got a nine run lead, but. You can't keep giving easy paths to the base paths here. That one will miss high count three and one. And now they're loaded. So two hit batters and then a walk. Grenadiers still looking for the first out here in the top of the seventh. Brings up the now designated hitter, Johnny Foti. I mean, the way the wind's blowing, one swing of the bat can make this a lot more interesting. Yes. Right in the heart of the order for Brescia. And I think Foti <laughs> was trying to make things very interesting with that swing. Yeah, that was a hefty hack. Here we go. Ahead 0 and 2. So that's going to force in a run. Pinch hitter here for Clements in the form of Camden Brothers, number 26. Brothers is a freshman from Litchfield, Kentucky. Two oh six batter. That one's hit weekly. Putnam, and he's going to get the force out at third, so that's the only play he was going to have. Good job by Shield to get back. So, Grainers do find the first out, but another run does come across to score. That'll be a not very common 6-5 to five fielder's choice. The old 6-5 to five fielder's choice, yes. And now the catcher, Josh Cossett, will look to continue the offensive push for Brescia. There's a good breaking ball. Might have figured it out a little bit on the field as Cade Rush. Would love to find a ground ball here. The uh, one, two. Way outside. Right. 
Cossett draws a full count. And they're loaded once again. And Coleman will come to courtesy run for the catcher. It looks like this is going to be Rush's game to figure out. I don't see much happening over in the bullpen unless I just, there's a throw down, nothing doing. Yeah, there's someone throwing down there. I don't know how quick or urgently they are getting loose. Rush is going to have to make an adjustment. Two one pitch. Going to be chopped to Hamilton. He's going to just get the out over at first. So another run comes across the score. But the Greeners do find the second out. Fresh is chipping away. Got the lead, or the deficit rather, back down to six. All of a sudden, a base hit here in this game is very interesting. With pressure only down four, and it's only the seventh. They can knock these two runners in. Reams is probably just glad he doesn't have to face Djokovic anymore. With three strikeouts on the day, can he come through here and get Brescia back in this. The 1-1 one, one pitch from Rush. That one's high. Cut on and miss. Good fastball there. That one hit off the end. That's going to get down. So that's going to be an RBI hit for Reams. And this is kind of uh, in reverse what I used how these did yesterday. Chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And all of a sudden, a big ending, and they... We're able to take the lead. They're going to need a couple big innings here if you're Brescia, but definitely getting yourselves back into this game after being down nine. Yeah, Benoit already one homer on the day. Takes a healthy cut of that, fouled off the catcher. Rush does a good job to get ahead here. 0 oh 2. Big spot for the sophomore. Cut on and missed. Rush gets out of it. 
but not before Brescia pushes four across. So they cut into the lead, and it's 14 to nine, heading to the top of the, or the bottom of the seventh. Luke Powell lead things off in the bottom of the seventh. Fern Spiker out for another inning. Russia hanging around. Good inning in the top half of the seventh as they push four across. That one's going to be through the right side, and that's going to be a leadoff base hit for Luke Powell. His second hit of the day. It looks like we're going to have pinch hitter Ryan Castle. Castle only is fourth game this season and third at bat, but he's hitting 500. Ern Spiker attacks him here. Gets ahead 0-2. Played a lot last year to Ryan Castle, so. Yep. With a uh, very crowded outfield and battling a couple injuries, especially early season, it's been hard for him to find some consistent playing time. But that one's going to be roped down the left field line, and that should be extra bases. He slips out of the box, but he's going to be around and sending Powell. So that's going to be an RBI double for Ryan Castle. Now Cody Putnam will re-enter in his spot to run for Castle. So job well done for the Veteran from Evansville. And now Coulter Hamilton. Will be the batter. He's hitting 250 on the season, has an RBI, only nine at bats for the freshman from Brownsburg, who's taken over at second base. That's ripped into left field. See, the first pitch he sees is gonna be hit hard and it's kicked down in the corner by the left fielder. So that's gonna be an RBI double for Coulter Hamilton. So he and Putnam trade places. Putnam comes around to score, and it's 16 to nine here in the seventh. 
You see scores on Sundays about this high. Mm -hmm. From both teams. Apparently, An uh, offensive couple, display. Apparently a couple missed extra points somewhere. Or a lot of field goals. A lot of field goals. So Connor Scheidt gets his opportunity. Scheidt hitting 333. He's driven in. This will be his fourth at bat. Driven in an R, had a, has an RBI. Scheidt, the Fortville, Indiana native, by the way, of Mount Vernon High School. That one hit hard. That one's got a chance to get down, but great job from Miller to range over and stick his arm out and make a really nice catch on the run. As off the bat, I thought that one had a chance just off the end from Scheidt. Good range. We've seen it all weekend. Absolutely. So Mur Logan Murphy will have another opportunity here. The immaculate vibes of Logan Murphy. Who we believe just double shy of the cycle? We believe that's the case. Ask our resident statistician to double check on that one for us. That one's going to be chopped down the line, and that's going to be extra bases for Murphy. He's going to be in there. We'll see what the scoring decision is as that was the backhand. Thoughts, Steven? I think that's – God, that's tough. You think that's a hit? Okay. So a double. So that is going to be a cycle then for Logan Murphy. Trevor Goodwin steps in again. Is that overhand breaking ball from Ernst Biker? It is a good one. Big swing and a miss there by Goodwin. Grenadiers punching right back. That one a little get me over swing. We'll move Yurt over to third, who is courtesy running for Murphy. Now Makai Stoner. Looks like if we get that far, Shield's going to re-enter here. It does appear as he is on deck, so he would re-enter. Or Shield had already re-entered. Sorry, he went in back in for defense. Okay, no, good point, good point, yep. It scared me there for a second. Yep. So a marathon game continues as Ern Spiker gets ahead of Stoner, one and two. It's been a swift two hours and 31 minutes to get to just under seven innings of work and maybe now seven full innings as that one is popped up and a good catch there by the catcher. So through seven. The score is 17 to 9 IU Southeast as we'll head to the top of the 8th here in New Albany.
Jackson Grissom on in relief here, and his first pitch is going to catch Troutman as well. So the Grenadiers cannot get out of their own way in this one. Grish Grissom on for his fifth appearance. He's only worked three and a third innings. Two walks, two strikeouts, a 5.4, or a, 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 a case per nine of 5.4, giving a, a couple home runs. And that's going to be a breaking ball, miss well high to Miller. As Grissom struggles to find the zone. Ball on the field again. And if there is an Achilles heel on this Grenier team this year, it has been the bullpen. It's something they're going to have to rectify before the conference tournament, which is about four weeks away. Certainly the middle part of the bullpen. Yeah, that bridge has been a struggle for the Grenadiers pitching staff. They're searching on finding some of those people that are, you know, just quote unquote eat innings. Um, Grissom trying to do so here. That one, that one smoked to left center, and that's going to be out of here. That got out in a hurry as Marco Miller put a charge into that one. Miller with his fifth home run of the season. And you're right, a, a charge quickly out of here. Grenadiers lead back to six. First pitch to Hubner is going to miss outside. Play by Putnam with a strong throw. So good bounce back by Grissom. And on the other side for Brescia, they've, you know, every single time you think you have them kind of down and out, they've they've battled back every subsequent inning. It's they, – they do keep fighting. And, again, I mean, it's a six-run deficit in the eighth. You would think that it would be insurmountable, but with the way the wind's blowing out today. And already – I mean, on the board you have a, a seven inning or a seven run inning, a four run inning, a four run inning, a three run inning, a five run inning between the two ball clubs. So you never know what's going to happen as this one has been very offensive anyway. That one's hit hard. And that one's got a chance That's to go. That's carrying. And that one's out of here. So another home run for Brescia, this one by Fody. So he started the game, stayed in as the designated hitter, and he hits his first home run of the season. And it's now a 17 to 12 game. And Brett Neffendorf gonna come out. We'll see if there will be a change. We'll step away and be back in a moment.
first pitch going to be grounded up the middle. Tough play there by Coulter Hamilton, but he will retire Camden Brothers. That's a nice play by Hamilton and a nice play by Shield, or uh, Shite rather, um, to make sure his foot stayed on the bag there. It's second out of the inning. And that will bring up the catcher, number 21, Josh Cossett. Yeah, like you said, Stephen, the, the Bearcats just continuing to stick around, and every time the Grenadiers punch, they punch right back. Just a couple couple bigger punches for the Grenadiers have the lead at five. But this game is far from over. 29 runs and almost seven and a half innings. And maybe a couple of those home runs were win aided, but most of them were absolute missiles. It wouldn't matter what the wind was doing. Yeah, a ball from Miller and Fody both were scorched as that one's cut on and missed. So the threat ends as they answer the three runs that they just gave up. So the lead is five as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Grenadiers 17, <laughs> Brescia 12. So we head to the bottom of the eighth. Slater Shield will lead things off as it's a five-run ball game. Grenadiers have two touchdowns and a field goal. And Brescia has – oh, that one's going to get down as Miller coming in and just loses his footing. That's going to be a, that's going to be a double for Shield. And Dalen Crabtree is the new pitcher for the Bearcats, making his seventh appearance. He's 0-2 on the season with an ERA of 10 in 10 innings. Five strikeouts, six walks, and an opponent batting average of 429. I think that one just kind of a little wind aided and – Caused Miller to try to shift his weight quickly and just loses his footing out there. As Grant Shepard will watch a strike.
Nice pitch there by Crabtree. He's ahead one and two. And the pitch. inside is two seam. Just doesn't run back enough. Three two pitch to Shepard. That one right back up the middle and off of Crabtree. That's going to be an infield single for Shepard. So Shepard hits it back where it came from. and See if they go and take a look at yeah. Crabtree. He says he's good. Now Luke Powell, center fielder, step in. See how aggressive the Grenadiers are on the base paths. As their lead has diminished to only five. Perhaps she will throw over, but back in plenty of time was Shep. Good breaking ball, and that's going to be thrown down by Casa, and so Shield is going to score. So it's a stolen base for Shepard, and then advancing on the throw is Shield. So the aggressiveness on the base pass comes through again for IU Southeast, and another stolen base, and Shield scores. Luke Powell behind the count 0 and 2. That one's going to miss just outside. The way today's gone, wasn't sure. Good job by the protector for the Brescia bullpen as he's getting some work in. A pitch to Powell. Evens it up two and two. Luke looking for his third hit of the contest. It's hit well down the left field line, but going to get foul. 18 runs, 17 hits, no errors for IU Southeast. 12 runs, 9 hits, and 5 errors by the Bearcats here as we play in the bottom of the eighth. Still nobody out. They'll let brothers get back into position after the long run. Drive 
That one hit high. It's going to be a tough play, and that's going to get down, but Powell is going back to the dugout. As I know, the coaching staff can't be pleased with that no. effort from Powell. So that'll be the first out for the Grenadiers. Rings up Cody Putnam. He also bumped into the catcher on that play, too. I thought they nah, he, he evaded, I, I saw. Not completely. So it wasn't maybe anything to knock him out of the – He didn't pad. touch him. No, I thought I, – it looked like he, they ran into each other. They did not. Okay. That one is going to miss as well, 2-0. Oh. Now, nah, I saw that had a pretty good angle on it. Saw some daylight between the two. Okay. It was close, but – Probably closer than you want, but – Well, especially probably should be going towards first base. Yeah. yeah. As that one's hit hard through the left side from Putnam. So Putnam gets his – oh, and he's going to head to second. On the throw. So he gets his second hit. And Coulter Hamilton will have another opportunity here. Base hit in his first at bat. Runners on second and third. Only one out for the Grenadiers. And I'll say this, I mean, it looks like the Grenadiers are on their way to maybe a second win in this series if they get it. You know, they've got a six-run lead. But if you're the coaching staff, you can't be thrilled with how these games have gone. Yeah, the offense has bailed you out twice. That one's going to be through the left side as well. So another RBI for Coulter Hamilton. And now the Grenadiers have runners on the corners. So a 19-12 to 12 game as Coulter Hamilton has done well here in relief. I mean, you can get creative with some scores here, you know. Touchdown, a field goal and a safety for Brescia. <laughs> um, you know, three touchdowns, all missed extra points. <laughs> or one, one, one made extra point for IU Southeast. As this and a is safety, yeah. But a wild score, 19 to 12. Connor Scheidt will step in. First pitch, swing in. That's through the right side. That'll be another run. Hamilton going from first to third, and he's going to get waved on as Quartz just lets that go right under his glove. One run in, another run in. So that's going to be a single and a two-base error. Wow. Just booted out there in right field. It clears the bases. Shite with his first hit of the game. We'll get one RBI. He'll get an RBI, yes. And assistant coach for Brescia is going to come out. They're going to have a quick discussion, so we'll step away and be back in a moment.
Get yourself another hit here, Logan Murphy. And that one off the end as the uh, game ending run just 90 feet away. Murphy has hit for the cycle, driven in four. See if he can cap off his day with another RBI. Crabtree staying away from Murphy, not the worst idea we've seen as he's having a day. That one, they're going to check him. Field umpire says he did not go, so count moves to three and one. Approaching the third hour of this game. I said pack a lunch earlier. I wasn't wrong. You were not. That one, breaking ball. That's going to get to the backstop. Is that going to do it? Yes. So this one, not pretty from either side, really, but going to be final score of 22 to 12. Grenadiers take game two of this series. They'll have the seven-inning Game coming up in approximately a half hour. Um, and yeah, and as you said, Stephen, I think Grenadiers have talked or walked away two wins in the first two games, but you cannot be pleased if you're Brett and Effendorf fan company. No, I mean, the only bright spot has really been the offense so far. Uh, the pitching staff has, has had issues – the starters have not gotten off to good uh, outings in either game so far. Um, we saw yesterday, I think the bullpen did very well. Uh, but there were only two pitchers needed. Today is honestly a little concerning, I think. But the offense is able to bail it out. Um, and now you really need a good all-around performance, I think, to feel good about this weekend. Um, Absolutely. At all here in game three. Yeah, as Jakovic starts Battle. off shaky, but really settled in, especially after that second inning. Even the, the only thing in the second was the solo shot from Benoit, and then goes, what is it, four, five scoreless, four scoreless after. Yep. So a good job by Jakovic to battle back. But, yeah, all, all wins don't look the same, and you're going to take the win nonetheless. So Grenadiers take game two, final score 22-12. to 12, And we will be back in about a half hour – for game three and the final game of this three-game set. For Stephen Utes, I'm Kyle Hawkins. We'll see you in a bit.